first of all, if you have not joined me on KISS, please go to my KISS members link after the live. I will put it down for you to join my KISS group where we give a whole lot more advice and help. And then I'd also like to invite you to pop over to my website, redmatchstick.com. And if you look on the right sidebar, you will see there's a whole bunch of free templates on my website to help you with quick shortcuts to get marketing things done. I think you'll find a lot of value there. So pop on over and have a look. And if you are interested, because I will talk about e-commerce, I have got another website called redmatchtech.co.za, which is my e-commerce site increasing your content folks the more content you distribute now the more likely you are to get seen and it sounds counterintuitive because there is so much content but you have to be there to be seen the trick is to be strategic and to stand out above the rest with better quality that is different which means you have to constantly be watching what your audience is engaging with what your competitors are doing that people are engaging with and learn how to do it better and create better content. Just this morning, I was saying to one of my clients that you need to carefully balance scheduled content versus real-time content. The platforms do not want to see everything scheduled because what does that say? That you are not posting now for your audience like to plan to too far in advance remember these are social platforms which are dealing with more spontaneous content they want to see you put real life not so much edited and pre-designed make sure you increase your content my advice is if you're struggling with creating a lot of content do your strategic posts as scheduled posts on a scheduling tool or create a studio to post to Facebook and Instagram at the same time and plan a week's content calendar but try and make an effort every day to pop onto your platforms with now authentic and preferably you why do I say that? We're all seeing people with masks. We're not recognizing people. We're not seeing people be real. We are seeing edited stuff. Jumping onto your content, being real, being you, that people can get to know you and relate to you is really valuable. The other point is niche focus. You need to create this content with a specific niche in mind. So you post for teachers and then you create another post for artists or you post for men and then you post for women. Your niche targeted content is much more likely to be effective and reach your ideal customer and talk into them. LinkedIn being the opportunity that right now LinkedIn is what Facebook was 2009, 2010 when one had huge reach B2C and B2B alike, use LinkedIn, get active there. Varying up your content is critical. Test, test, test. You must see what you uh, give your audience the option to respond to different content and then learn from the different content you post. So between uh, written, audio, visual, moving visual, i.e. video or stills, vary it up, folks. And if you don't know how to vary it up, please use my content calendar. It forces you to think out the box, to think about other ways. Blogging, if you are not adopting blogging yet, please go and watch last week's video. The new up and coming social media platform is Clubhouse. It's being rolled out at the moment. It's an audio social media platform. And it's really cleverly designed in a clubhouse concept where you meet people in the hallway and you go to rooms for chats and so on. Sadly, it's only being rolled out on iPhone at the moment, being tested on iPhone. And I'm a Samsung girl, so I haven't got access to it yet. Like a clubhouse, you have to be invited to be a member. But this is going to be a place to listen to meaningful conversations and you can go into rooms and join influencers and opinion makers to learn 
which you normally didn't have access to before. It's going to be a great one. Watch out for Clubhouse. If you're on an iPhone, download the app already and try and get in there. SEO in 2021. Search engine optimization in 2021 is going to be about valuable content. It's not so much about the techie stuff. So don't obsess about the techie. If you write valuable content and you optimize title and the description of your content and so on, Google will love it because it is looking for content that people are searching for. One thing that I picked up in Think with Google article this week was a comparison of consumer behavior now during the pandemic and people's reaction to the situation they find themselves in. And 2008 is three things. People are searching for deals more than ever. People are buying online, obviously. And then you should be optimizing for global reach. Because we're online, we have to stop thinking local. Make sure you've got e-commerce optimized, i.e. either an e-commerce site or you've got a Facebook shop, an Instagram shop, and you can tag for people to buy or that you have got ways that people can make contact with you online to take the next step. The prediction is that millennials and Gen Z's techie uh, generations will definitely adopt this behavior going forward. They are going to stay buying online. They're going to, to research deals. They're going to learn to find the best product, research, reputation, reviews, all those things. So learn to optimize now. It is the behavior of the future. The other thing to look out for is website speed. Because people are spending so much time online on their mobile device, your website has to be as quick as lightning. Make sure you optimize it. The, the quickest way to optimize your website speed is to reduce the size of your images, not the quality, the size. Make sure your images remain good, but reduce the size so they load quicker. And as I said, show more of you, more authentic, less perfect. I've been posting that this week on using fancy text in posts and using the text generator for the copy in the top of your post. Guys, be very aware of how legible it is. User experience is much more important than looking clever and looking creative. I see far too many posts that are using the fancy text generator that you can't actually read the post. And in actual image quote posts that there's either too much text, it's too small or a too script and people can't read the stuff. If people have to manipulate your image to read your text, it's not really creating a great user experience. Rather do some teaser text in your image and then let, send them to your post to read more. That's a very good way to get people longer on your post, which then tells the algorithm that your content is very interesting. Value and the rule of seven. Because I see on the groups I belong to, so far too many people saying, Please have a look at the different versions of my logo and tell me which you prefer. Far too many people are obsessing about a pretty logo and not enough are obsessing about what you do, why you do it, who you do it for, and what results you are bringing people, because that's what people actually care about. Think about it. When people see your content on social media, they're seeing the content way before they see your logo. First of all, um, and not dropping another name of the gurus I follow, Seth Godin, who I just love, who I saw in a video this last week, was named as the modern Peter Drucker, and marketers out there will know who Peter Drucker is. Seth Godin is um, just the most amazing marketer, and he made a point in a video I watched that really hit me somewhere powerfully, was... How much more, listen carefully now, how much more are people prepared to pay for your service or product than for your competitor? So here we come to the whole bunch of conversations about discounting, about trying to give less for more and so on, or more for less. 
if people are prepared to pay more for your product and service than for your competitor, you have brand value. People value your brand and then your logo, the way you look and feel starts getting significance. And people start looking for that because they start searching for your brand before the deal hunting that we've been saying is prevalent now. So building value is really important. How do you do that? By trying to be better. Be different, deliver better customer service. Can I say that again? Be different, be better, and deliver better customer service. That is the fail-safe go-to with everything you do. So in terms of responding to inquiries, responding to people's problems, responding to reviews, responding to questions, those are ways to stand out and be different. It is incredible how many people ask for engagement on social media posts or ask questions and you go and look and they haven't responded to a single one. So why are you asking? Doesn't do your brand any good. The opportunity you are looking for is in each of those niches we've been talking about is to look for a situation that people are unhappy with and imagine how you can solve that problem, how you can bring them back to pleasure island. Why are people buying? Not what are they buying? Why are they buying? More and more because of online, the search, the interaction with different content, the way people are behaving. If you look at why people are doing stuff, you're going to answer so many questions. Why are you watching this live broadcast? The comments, the analysis, what you tell me down below, my asking for engagement helps me with why you are here and helps me to respond to that more effectively. You should be doing that in all your content. Why are people opening your email? Why are people reading your blog? Why are people reviewing? Why are people asking questions? Generally, if people are asking you questions about your product or service, you're not answering them. So that gives you the opportunity to create a uh, frequently asked questions section. Do lives to explain uh, answers to questions. Deal with objections up front. The why is incredibly useful. And when you start looking at niche markets and there, what they are struggling with and why you are the best choice becomes the game changer. 57% of B2B buyers are way through the buying process before they even speak to the company. So that brings me to my rule of seven I quickly want to give you some insight about and for you to use the rule of seven in your content generation. So what is the rule of seven? It basically means that people have at least seven interactions with your brand, business, you, before they are even in the buying mindset, okay? Seven interactions. So, okay, the, there are exceptions to that. Low value, spontaneous purchases, like the sweetie at the counter, at the till, and those kind of things. Those are very different. But when it is high value or... Uh, something that people are expecting is going to have big impact. There is a process and the rule of seven is a fail-safe strategy to implement to help your conversion and make it easier to convert people to a customer. So this is where marketing is really important because you can plan for those seven interactions create content for those seven interactions, which very naturally take people to a buying situation. What is an interaction? So it's anything where somebody sees you, your brand, and either sees or actually physically engages. So it's a post engagement, a video view, a share of your post, a story view, a story reaction, a friend mentioning your brand or tagging your brand. So just somebody tagging your brand 
in comments like I'm looking for a marketing for my business and somebody tags at Susie Bauer Red Matchstick. That is now people having exposure to my brand and it may very well be the first time they've heard of my business. Seeing interactions and repetition is a way to cement the brand name, the service and so on. Because let's face it, so many of us see businesses fly by on social media. You think I must remember that and of course you don't. So repeating it is cementing it in the brain, giving people confidence and helping people with their thinking, research. You take them down the steps of the customer journey. So for example, we've said reviews, friends giving a review and you sharing your reviews into your newsfeed that or into your email marketing or whatever it gives people another touch point another different kind of content that you leverage to give people more confidence in your brand to help them with their research ads email marketing blogs printed stuff like flyers if that is applicable to your business a direct message saying have a look at this by the way, that whole st strategy of engaging on a one-to-one -one with people, particularly in LinkedIn, you don't immediately start selling. You start adding value. You uncover that pain point that they have. How can you help them? Why would they need you? And respond to that and give them tools or advice or send them to a link that can help them with their pain point. No selling. We are marketing. We are not yet selling. So you start with that relationship and you start sharing a message that gives them another opportunity to have content contact with you. They then see reviews. They see posts from you in another place. They maybe read an article about you. You give them, very important, the, the idea of giving people freebies to download in exchange for their email address. Mm -hmm. Value valuable stuff when I say freebie. So there's a whole range of those. You want to give people stuff in exchange for an email address so that they sign up and you can carry on with email marketing to build the relationship and keep with the further touch points because email marketing is the most amazing way to have further touch points in an organized way. You're not selling, you're constantly adding value. If people interact with you on these touch points in a positive way, you are naturally nudging them down your sales funnel. First question, I want you to think about these stages of your customer journey. And for those of you who don't know the stages, dreaming, researching, buying, experiencing, and sharing. Try and create content for those five stages for each of your niche markets and put them out on different days strategically so you are taking people down the sales funnel with content that talks into the stages of the buyer journey. The other concept that you need to also think about is the awareness. I've spoken often and I have a blog about writing for levels of awareness is it goes from people who don't even know they have a problem to people who are ready to buy. So you write into how well people know you, how familiar they are with the solution to their problem. Are they still searching different solutions or are they searching for the solution that you provide and are they already at the stage of evaluating? Because you cannot do this if you don't have a plan that you can make your notes in and that you can take people from step to step. So number two, if you're not doing this with a plan, implement a plan. Thank you for joining me today. Take care. And until next time, goodbye.